Hey guys, I'm here today with my September wrap up, so let's just get into it. In the month of September, I did read a total of five books, and I really thought that I was going to be reading more in September, but you know, sometimes things happen. I also didn't really stick to my September TBR, even though I only had four books on my TBR, so I will not be doing an October TBR. I feel like doing one every other month because realistically, my one month TBR is going to transfer over into the month after that as well. Anyway, let's talk about the books I read. Seems like so long ago, but the first book that I read in the month of September was The Tuscan Child by Reese Bowen, and I had wanted to read this for the Booktubeathon, and I just hadn't been able to. But initially, I gave the Tuscan Child four stars and then after thinking about it I realized it was really more of just like a three star okay middle of the road kind of read for me so this is a dual perspective story we have a World War II story and then we also have a story of a daughter uncovering her father's past and the daughter she's in like the 70s or so and her father has just passed away and she's learning the story about when her father was shot down in a plane and he landed in a very small village in Italy and how he was cared for by this woman. And you do get both of the stories in this book, the story of the daughter uncovering this past of her father and then obviously the father's story when he was injured and being taken care of by this Italian woman. It sounds in theory like this would have been a really good story, an emotional story, one that had a lot of heart and feeling in it, but I found it just painfully predictable in parts. There wasn't even an attempt at making a twist on it, I found. I don't even mind predictable books. Like that's not really a problem for me. If I see it coming that I'm still enjoying the whole story of it and the characters, I really could care less if I predict the ending or not. But this one, it just was too predictable and it wasn't enjoyable. And so unfortunately, it wasn't a historical fiction that I would really recommend to people just because there are so many better World War II historical fictions out there that I would recommend over this one for sure. Just this whole story itself felt really flat for me. I didn't really get much feeling from the characters or their situation despite the dire circumstances they were in. I really wanted more from this book and I was disappointed and this was the first book I'd read by Reese Bowen so if you've read anything else by this author definitely let me know if it's worth giving another one a shot. So next I read another disappointing read and that was Meet Cute. This is a short story anthology I believe that's what it's called with all the stories are Meet Cute so it's just the beginning of two characters and their initial meet cute and obviously you're to assume that a relationship or something forms from this meet cute moment and I gave this two stars. I listened to this on audiobook and I just really didn't care for it. Nothing really bad about any of these meet cute stories but for me the meet cute is yes important and you like it but I like what comes after the meet cute so much more and that really made me realize it when I was getting all these meet cutes because for me the story has just begun and I'm only getting the beginning of it. I really was surprised that I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought that I would. My favorite story by far out of this whole series was one that I really would have liked to see as a full book. There's this student and she's like a very smart young woman. She's doing a project for one of her statistics class, I believe, because she sees this cute boy on the subway. And so her whole project is like, what are the statistics that if she controls all the variables that she'll be able to see this cute boy again. And so she does this project for, I think it's a couple weeks and she gets everyone in her class excited about it. And it's just so cute. Like you can't really say too much about the story because it's a very short story. And I would have loved to see that as a full book, but as a whole, I would not really recommend me cute personally because I just didn't really feel too much from it. I wished all these books could have been in their own individual stories, but just getting that little taste and then it being over was not for me. Next, I read a very good book and I'm so happy that I finally got to reading this. I read The Goblet of Fire. This is the fourth book in the Harry Potter series. It is my favorite Harry Potter book. And after reading it again, I felt very confirmed and yes, this is my favorite Harry Potter book still. I do have like really close seconds. I mean, I love sort Sorcerer Stone and Half-Blood Prince too, like so, so, so much. So it's really hard for me to say, you know, that really Got a Little Fire is my favorite, but after reading this fourth book, I just absolutely love it. The friendships, the angst that develops over the whole Yule Ball situation. There's just so much like growing up that happens in Goblet of Fire and there's such a heavier tone to this, especially near the end. And obviously the heavier tone continues the rest of the series, but Goblet of Fire really kind of starts that and sets that heavy tone. I was considering doing a reading vlog for it. And unfortunately I didn't get around to it, which I'm a little sad about. But if you would be interested in seeing a reading vlog for when I do order 
of the Phoenix, which I don't know if I'll do that next month or you know the month after, but sometime soon. Let me know because I'd be happy to do that. Obviously, it'll be full of spoilers because I'll just be re-reacting to some of my favorite parts from the series and from that book. So just let me know if that's something you'd be interested in particular in seeing. I know that there's a lot of Harry Potter readathons happening at the end of the year, and a lot of people reread Harry Potter, especially around like Halloween and Christmas. I love reading Harry Potter in the fall because that's when I first read the series. So I totally understand that. So definitely let me know if you would like to see that. This wrap up, I have not many books to talk about and I am just blabbing way too much. So I'm very sorry about that. So next I read another fantastic book. I read A Man Called Uva by Frederick Bachman. This book has five stars from me. I have a full review for it, so I will not gush about it too much here. Since you can hear all of my gushing in my review, I will leave a link down below. This book just really is incredible. It's about this very grumpy old man who has lost his wife and he really hates life. He hates everybody. And these neighbors move in across from him and an unlikely friendship forms between them and they learn about each other. You learn about Uva's past and you just see how these characters draw Uva out and show him that there is something to life still despite him losing his wife. And then I also watched the movie that weekend after I had finished the book. The movie was fantastic too. Really well done. I watched it with Nathan and Nathan even really enjoyed it too. Highly, highly would recommend A Man Called Uva for honestly everybody. I'm giving everyone a copy for Christmas because that's just how I feel about the book. But it was fantastic. And the last book that I read in the month of September was amazing. And just insane in so many ways and that was The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna which I also talked about in my last reading vlog so I won't share too much here because I did finish it over that reading vlog. This is the story of a young girl named Lenny and she lives with her mother and her father and her father had been a prisoner of war in Vietnam and so he is dealing with a lot of PTSD. He's not the same person that he was before he left and so he inherits some land from one of his comrades who he fought beside in the war in the middle of nowhere Alaska. So their whole family Family moves up to Alaska and you just see them across the span of quite a few years actually and just seeing how the father you know looks to Alaska as this place where they can be happy and they can be new but the father's demons still follow him and how he plays those demons out to his family you just see the whole family progression and how they get involved in this very small community in Alaska I think they said there's like 30 or so homesteaders where they live so it's a very very small community but it's very tight-knit and and the father kind of sows some discord in that community and just seeing it all crumble. It was an incredible story. I feel like I have so many feelings and thoughts on it because it's such a broad story. I mean, you start off and the character of Lenny is 13, I believe. And at the end of the story, she's 25. So you do get like a decade here of her life. I was not expecting so many of the things that happened to happen. It was an amazing story of human resilience and love, uh, what true love is versus what a codependent love is and how that can be so destroying of a relationship. How it can even destroy a family. Anyways, lots of lots of thoughts on The Great Alone. I give it in like four and a half stars out of five stars. Definitely a good read if it sounds at all interesting to you. I would encourage you to pick it up but just be warned that there are heavy topics in this book and it's not something to go into lightly. It's not going to be just a fun light happy beach read. I mean this is pretty intense stuff that's discussed so just be aware of that if you are going into this but I still would highly recommend it if it does sound interesting to you. That wraps up the month of September for me and now an exciting announcement because I said already that I'm not doing a TBR for October but I didn't want to throw in here. Nathan will now be reading a book of my choosing every single month. He made a little deal with me that if I let him train me at the gym two days a week he will read a book of my choosing every month so so I am very, very sore today because he took me to the gym yesterday, but I have like a little list in my head now of books that I'm going to have Nathan to read. So you'll be seeing him a little bit here and there if I do some reading vlogs too, and I'll kind of share what he's reading and what books I have from him. His assigned reading for the month, he will be starting off with Mistborn since we were all going to be reading that actually over the summer, but he just never got around to reading it. So he first needs to finish reading Mistborn, and then I've decided that he will be reading The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna because 
I just love that story. It's one of my favorite World War II historical fictions. So I think it's important that he reads it because it's a genre I really, really love. And I think that's another story like A Man Called Uva where everyone can read that story and get something from it and enjoy it. So I am definitely gonna share that with him, but I will share my love for all of my books with him and I'm so excited. So I just wanted to end with saying that. So that is it. That's my September wrap up. Thank you so much for watching and happy reading.